This is the Greenfoot game practice test, and our goal is to write the game of Asteroids. So you should have this handout from either in class, or you can also download it from my YouTube channel at the top in the description. First up is go ahead and play Asteroids. If you haven't played the game of Asteroids before, go ahead and go to this website or just search for it online and spend a few minutes playing Asteroids so you can see how it works. Next up, when programming Asteroids, we need to use a few different ways to move actors around the screen. Now, normally you would say set location and specify the new X and Y position of an actor, something like this. Let's say the spaceship is here. If you call set location uh, X comma Y, it'll move the actor from its current spot to a new X, Y location. Whatever you say for the new location, it'll move to that spot. We did this for Flappy Bird, but for the game of Asteroids, we need this plus we need to do set rotation for angle and move distance. Here's how these two work. For set rotation angle, I can actually show you in Greenfoot. If you right click any actor in Greenfoot, you can just run methods right there. So if we say set rotation, and let's say we set the rotation to 45 degrees, that points the actor in a direction of 45 degrees. Now the X axis points to the right, and in Greenfoot, angles go clockwise this direction. So 45 degrees is pointing down here by 45 degrees. Then after pointing in a certain direction using set rotation, you can say move by a certain amount. So we'll say move, and let's say it will move by 50 units. You'll see the ship move forward by 50 units from where it was all the way to here. And so we need both of those techniques in asteroids. Set location to a new spot, and also change your angle of an actor and then move by a certain distance. Both of those are gonna be needed and you'll see that when we get to the code. All right, first up, step one, download the project resources. I've done this already, it's on my desktop. Let me go there now and unzip them. So here's the asteroid files. I'm gonna go ahead and unzip this to my desktop. And so here's Here's the zip file. I can get rid of that now. And here's the actual files. So inside our files, what you have is, you have these files here. So we have a large asteroid a image, a small asteroid, a bullet. We have some sound files. We have the background space image, the ship, and then some starter code. And the starter code, it's here, but we'll pay attention to it when we need it, but you do have some code that's given to you because it involves math that I don't expect you know. All right, so we'll save this for later. Uh, continuing. All right, so we've downloaded the project resources. Next up is time to create a 600 by 600 world that's unbounded and set the background image to space.gif from the resource images. So in Greenfoot, go ahead and open it up if you don't have it already. I'm gonna go ahead and close my current scenario and create a new scenario. You can put your new scenario wherever you want. I'll put mine on my desktop and I'm gonna call mine Asteroids. Then go ahead and create your new project. So at first you get a blank project with no worlds and no actors. So we need to do what the instructions ask, which is let's create a 600 by 600 world and then we'll work on the unbounded part next. So 600 by 600 world, right-click world, new subclass, we'll call this asteroid world. And then for background image, go ahead and choose the image that's called space from wherever you downloaded the resources to. So here's mine, now space.gif is our background image, select that, say okay, and you're good to go. Then go into this code, double click on Asteroid Worlds. And here's the code that we have by default. Let me resize my window so we can see it's easier. So by default, it creates a 600 by 400 world, and then where each cell is size one pixel. So we'll make this 600 by 600. And now here's how to make a world unbounded. Unbounded means that in your game, the actors can go off the edge of the screen. We need that in this particular case. So let's go to the API for world to see what a world can do. To get to the API, you go to Greenfoot class documentation under help. That opens up this guy. And now let's go to worlds. 
So here's the world class and the constructors. There's two of them. So I can zoom in for you. Oops. All right. So for worlds, I don't know if you can see this. Let me not zoom in. I'm not sure what you're going to see otherwise. We've been using this constructor that takes in the size of the world for width and height, and then the cell size, which is always one pixel for us. But there's another constructor that you can pass in a fourth parameter. So you still say 600 by 600, where each cell is one pixel wide, but then you pass in a Boolean, true or false, if the world's bounded. So we're going to pass in a value of false, meaning that the world is not bounded. So let's go back to our world code and pass in a value of false. And now if we go ahead and compile this guy, so compile, actors are allowed to go off the edge of the screen, which is what we want for this particular case. So there's our step one or step two of the right size world with the right um, requests here. All right, on to step three. Step three, create a ship actor and set its image to ship.png. No problem there. Let's go ahead and right click actor, choose new subclass, call this say ship, and then back to our, our folder. So desktop for me, asteroid files, and then ship.png. Select that guy and okay. So we have a ship, let's see, add a global variable double for DX and DY to keep track of the ship's X and Y velocity. All right, fine. So we'll go into the ship's code and make two variables, one called DX, one called DY that keeps track of the ship's um, position, or not position, but, but speed. So they're gonna be double variables. So go ahead and go to your ship's code so open up ship. Let me resize my window so we can see what's going on. All right, so we're in the ship code. So inside, make sure you're inside this brace here. Inside, towards the top, let's add two variables. Double dx, and we can set it equal to, oh, there you go. I was gonna set it to zero, but let's just not. Double dy, check. So we have two variables, global variables, that can be referred to throughout the class. And we'll add a variable for speed and set it equal to 0.5. So no problem there. Double speed equals 0 0.5. Now I'm capitalizing this because it's supposed to be a constant. It doesn't change. DX and DY change throughout the program, but speed is going to be set to 0 0.5 and not change throughout the program. That's my intention. All right, check part C write code in the ship's act method so that when the player presses left, the ship rotates five degrees counterclockwise. Let's do that first. So how do you figure out if the user's pressing up, down, left, right, and green foot? Well, that's always back in the API. So here's our API. Let me back up a page. So the green foot class itself has what you need for key names. So the keys are simply strings, space, tab. Uh, we're going to use up, down, left, right, literally up, down, left, right as strings. And the method we need is right here, is key down. And since it's static, remember a static function means that to call this function, you say the class name greenfoot dot whatever function. In our case, greenfoot dot is key down, and you pass in the string name like left, right, up, down, whatever. So let's go ahead and copy this guy. Okay, is key down, back to our code. So if greenfoot dot is key down, and we wanted to say if the person is pressing left. So if they press left, put left in quotes, then let's put equals equals true. So if the person's pressing left, and this is true, that they're pressing left, then we'd like to rotate the ship left by five degrees or counterclockwise. So to rotate an actor, it's under the actor API. So I'm going to go ahead and back up to the actor API. And inside the actor API, there's a function to rotate actors. It is called 
uh, that's get rotation, but we want set rotation. So here it is, set rotation. Remember, always try to do these things on your own. So if you can see what to do at this point, jump ahead and do it yourself before continuing the video. Don't just watch me do stuff and copy me. All right, so we're going to set the rotation of this actor to five degrees less than whatever it is now. Actually, you know what? Let's not use set rotation. To be honest, set rotation is not what we want. We want turn because set rotation, it'll set it to exactly that amount, not turn by. So let's use turn. All right, so turn by negative five degrees. That would be counterclockwise. And then let's copy this code and do the same thing for turning the other direction. So if we press left, then turn counterclockwise. Otherwise, else if we press right, then we want to turn clockwise five degrees. Let's make sure this compiles and runs. All right. The screen itself is larger than you can see, so I'm going to have to just squish things in. All right, compile. If we run the program, of course, there's nothing showing up because we don't have any ship actors on the screen. So let's go ahead and um, well, let's keep following our code. Let's see. All right, so in our world code, let's add a new ship actor to the center of the screen. So if we open up Asteroid Worlds, after creating the world, let's go ahead and add a ship to the uh, world. So to add objects to the world, I assume you've done this many times, it's add object. And we need to, we want to add a new ship. In fact, let's just make a ship first here. We'll take the time to say ship, call it ship, whatever you want, equals new ship. So this creates a ship actor. And then below this, we're going to go ahead and add this ship to the code to the world. So let's add this actor ship to the center of the world, which is that get width divided by two and then half the height. So we're adding the ship actor to the center of the screen. And now we can go ahead and compile our code. And there it is. Cool. If I press, so this is the world, the center, by the way, if I scroll this really is the center, but it looks like it's not because I'm scrolling. Okay, run this. Pressing left turns the actor left, and pressing right turns it to the right. So that's cool. The uh, scrolling motions because I need to have my window sized larger. All right, there. Now if I press left and right, it's just straight left and right. So we have that working. Cool. Next step. All right. Our code does work, so we're good for step three. On to step four. For step four, it says in the ship's act method, add code so when the player presses up, the ship's helper functions speed up is called. When the person presses down, the ship's helper functions slow down is called. So these are helper functions given to you in the um, asteroids uh, setup file. So it's called asteroids files. Let me update that thing. So let's go ahead and copy the uh, starter code into our ship's function. So back to my desktop. Now's the time we have to look at the starter code. So go ahead and open up the starter code. And it says to place these helper functions in our ship code. So I'm going to just go ahead and copy them and paste these into our ship code. So here's the code for ship, and this is currently, this whole thing's the act method. So after the act method, make sure you get past the last brace of that thing, then go ahead and paste the starter code. So now we have added two helper functions, one that slows the ship down and one that speeds it up, and the math is done for you. All you care about is that it changes the DX and DY to slow the ship down or speed it up. And what we wanted to do with this is when the person presses up, call the speed up function. All right, cool. So it's just like this stuff here. We already have left, right, up, down stuff. Now let's do left, we have left, right. Let's do up, down now. So if the user presses up, 
then we wanted to call the function speed up. That's this helper method down here. So we'll call that. So when you press up, go ahead and call the speed up helper function. And if the person presses down, then we're going to call the slow down helper function. And those functions will just do their job. All right, check. Okay, next up. Update the location of the ship using set location to the old position plus either DX or DY. All right, check. So this handles key presses. The person presses a key and the ship behaves accordingly. The thing is, all these methods do, or at least these two, is they update DX, DY, but you still have to set the location of the uh, ship to that spot. So we're going to use set location to change the location of the ship. And we're going to set it to its current X coordinate plus the change in uh, speed. And then its current Y coordinate plus DY. So what this is saying to do is place the ship at the same spot it is now, but shift it over by however much speed it has in the X direction. And same with Y. Put it at the regular Y position, but shift it over by its Y speed. And so the faster the ship goes, the higher DX and DY will be. These are basically speeds that add to the current position. So there's set location. Now, if we try to compile this, we get an error message saying that set location requires integers for both the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. But DX and DY are doubles. You can't pass a decimal in to the set location function. So what we need to do is convert this calculation into a double, which is a decimal floating point. So to do this, to typecast in Java, you surround your calculation with parentheses. So one big set of parentheses. Then outside that, you put the new data type also in parentheses. So integer, this will typecast this calculation in parentheses into type integer. So any decimals will just be naturally chopped off. And same thing for the dy calculation. Surround this with parentheses and in front specify the new data type, which is integer. So now this will compile and not complain about integer uh, problems. So class compiled. If we go ahead and run this, let's see if it's actually working. So I hit compile. I'm going to hit run now. If I press up, Oh, awesome. So check it out. The ship's already doing extremely good behavior. So um, check it out. Oops, I lost it. Okay, so pressing up speeds the ship up, down, slows it down backwards. And the arrow keys are totally independent. So I can spin and move in different directions. It has a really cool spacey feel to it. Now, so far, the ship gets lost when it goes off the screen. So we'll be changing that soon. All right, let's go back to our document and see where we are. All right, so we've done step four, cool. And uh, step five, I think I'll save this for another video. So we'll continue step five in the next video. All right, see you then.